Sean, though, I, if I'm correct, I'm wondering whether you're more concerned about AGI for our long-term future than LLMs. For me, no. Um, I don't have any special worry about AGI. I, I think that, in fact, it's it's more or less the opposite. I think that you know AGI may or may not happen. It's not on the horizon in the very short term, but you know the rate of progress is very quick, so I'm not going to predict when it happens. We don't have it now. But I'm concerned about the fact that uh, intelligence of the human sort is apparently so easy to fake, even when you don't have it. And so, and I, and I think that that is, I mean, even if it's not, let me put on the, the pessimist hat now, even if civilization in some sense adapts and is fine, democracy is already very much fragile. And a tiny little bit of perturbation can easily push it the wrong way. So even though I, I think that, you know, humankind is not going to be beaten back by AGI into the Stone Age, we might very well have some tremendous upheaval in our political or social system just because the tendency was already there and here's a new tool to hasten it along. Yeah, I fully fully agree, Sean. I think I think you've you've put the issue very well. And you know, Norbert Wiener was there many, many years ago in the human use of human beings. He said you gotta remember that a tool is also a weapon. And that if you make a powerful tool, it will soon be in the hands of of, of your enemies as well. And uh, defense is usually more expensive than offense. Steve, am I right, though, just to, to put a, a bow tie on this, that for you, the development of LLMs might fit into your general framework of enlightenment and the idea that humanity is making progress through rationality. And this is just one of many technologies that sort of changes our way of life, but maybe like the development of nuclear weapons that could pose an existential threat, but in the end, it, it doesn't through the sorts of countermeasures. Hey, yeah, a couple of things. Large language models aren't the same as artificial intelligence. And I have some skepticism as to whether uh, lar large language models, which capitalize fortuitously on the availability of human generated content on the uh, the, the web and that, that that itself might be limited by the uh, the new copyright lawsuits filed by the New York Times um, together with the, the development of uh, graphic processing units that just make it more feasible to crunch unthinkably gargantuan data sets compared to, to in the past. And so I think we shouldn't, the fact that <clears throat> for a couple of developments that made large language models the quickest route to some simulacrum of intelligence shouldn't uh, confuse us into thinking that artificial intelligence and large language models are the same thing. Because large language models don't have propositional understanding of the world. There are no facts. There's no uh, concepts of, uh, of objects or people or things or places which is why they're so vulnerable to, to hallucinations. Uh, so putting aside the particular technology of large language models, which is one way of doing artificial intelligence, uh, I think there is enormous progress for artificial intelligence to en enhance human well-being, simply because we know that in so many realms, the human mind is just not capable of dealing with complexity that is um, that challenges us, such as a medical decision making. You know, I, I see my, my my doctor. Why should I think that uh, my entire genome, my entire medical history, uh, the entire medical literature, uh, with all of its contradictions, should be graspable by the guy that just happens to be sitting across from me in, in that room? It's beyond the capability of any uh, uh, human mind and an ability to absorb all of the relevant data from genome, medical history, epigenome, and so on, together with all the contradictory data out there is something where there's, I think there's tremendous progress. I'm speaking here also as a cognitive psychologist aware of the limitations of the human mind in dealing with large uh, amounts of data. Going back to the 50s, a simple regression formula uh, outperformed uh, any human expert in any area in which data were available. Artificial intelligence uh, could uh, supercharge the ability to extract useful knowledge uh, out of data, together with a lot of the human 
uh, suffering that is uh, a consequence of the fact that we still use human labor and uh, the, the lower levels of human cognitive processing to do a lot of drudgery that could be automated to the, uh, to the, 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 the benefit of humanity. Now, I think there are also, there are also threats, as there are with any technology. Uh, I think the fears of AI takeover, of it turning us into raw materials, of, as uh, collateral damage, of um, it, uh, a megalomaniacal AI seeking to subjugate us are all overblown. But these might be uh, topics for another conversation. Yeah. No, yeah. Cer certainly, there's a lot of overblown uh, fear mongering out there. Uh, I think that um, one way of looking at this is that the use of LLMs that might be really benign and useful is to use it as a generator in a generate and test system where the tester is the editor, is the judge, and is the cherry picker. And we let the LLM just generate a whole lot of stuff. Some of it will be hallucinogenic. Some of it won't. It might be a very good way of getting off-the-wall ideas that you wouldn't otherwise think of into the conversation. It's a little bit dangerous, but we have many examples of, of human collaborations where you've got a sort of wacky generator, uh, a person who has lots of ideas, most of which should be uh, thrown out, and and a wise editor who 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 does a, a careful cherry picking selection on those ideas. I think that that's. That's one of the areas where I think even LLMs could prove useful just as a as a source a a non a non chaotic well as a source as a generator of diversity where the diversity will tend to have something to do with whatever you're interested in. I guess although the large language large language models seem to have been engineered for banality more than for creativity so far so far but i think i think that's probably tweakable yeah well actually, it may be again this this i think we shouldn't equate large language models with artificial intelligence and it could be that there is a form of artificial intelligence that does that that may just be more than soaking up massive statistical patterns out of gargantuan data sets <laughs> <laughs>